In this video, I will teach you once and for all how to use the Elementor Flexbox container. Before going to the tutorial, I will ask you to leave a like on this video and for you to subscribe to the channel, okay? If that's it, let's go to the tutorial. So come on, guys. I'm here on the Innova Nutri website, which is an institutional website that I taught you to create with Elementor Free 100% here on the channel. I'll leave the link in the card and in the description if you want to go there and learn. So, okay, I already made a video here on the channel teaching you how to use the Flexbox container as soon as it was released. Only since then, there have been many changes. And I see that you have many questions. And a lot of people have used the Flexbox container in the wrong way. The Flexbox container is the new technology from Elementor. For those who don't know, before Elementor, it used sections and columns. So when you clicked here, instead of giving container, it had sections. And then the spaces between one and the other here, we called columns. Now it has changed, now they are containers. Everything is container. What is the main difference? Containers are like old sections. The columns have been extinguished, there are no more. And it's like it's just sections. So much so that, remember that before there was an internal section? Which was just for us to be able to put one section inside the other. So, now everything is container, which is the section reference. And then this allows us more dynamism, because in the previous sections we had more configurations. We were able to do more things in the sections than in the columns. So, for example, when you needed to come here in advanced movement effect, leave the Now it won't appear because I don't have Elementor Pro. But leave, for example, fixed, it was only in the section. There were several configurations that you could only do in the section and not in the column. And now, as it's all section, which we call container, there is no more configuration restriction. We can shape the layout as we want. This is one of the reasons. The other reason is to save access time and make the site run faster. Everything we create here on our site, Elementor, they created a wonderful tool that we can only drag visual blocks and turn the site into this. But every little thing we configure generates a code. So we see our site like this, but the computer, the browser, the browser, like Google, it sees our site like this. This here that I'm showing you is called DOM. This is an ARIA frame that stores all the code of our site. And then the browser, for example, like Chrome, Google, when we access the link here on our site, it will read all this code here and show us this here. This is what we call rendering. And when we have a configuration like this, which is the Flexbox container, which saves code, that is, if we use it the right way, the way I'm going to teach here, if we use it the right way, saving code, there will be less code for the browser to read. Got it? So, if there are fewer lines for it to read, faster it can deliver the visual representation for us. So, the site loads faster. This is a matter of seconds. It reads this here and delivers it to us. But the more code there is, the longer it takes to read. Got it? So the less we can leave these codes here, the faster our site will load. Okay, so how does Flexbox do this? It reduces these codes. For example, before we had a column configuration like this. It was more or less like this. We had a section and had several columns. So we had this code here that we created from the section and other tiny codes for the columns. And then we put things inside the columns and it generated more code. So we had the section code, the column code, the code to leave things inside the column, so it generated code inside of code inside of code. When we take just a container and configure everything inside the container, we have only one code, which is the container code, and we don't have the section code. And then, for example, if I want an image to be on one side of the other here, instead of having, like we had in the section, in the section technology, which was a code for the container, a code for one section, another code for another section, then another code to insert an image inside of one, another code to insert an image inside of another. Now, we only have one section code and another line of code for the images. The image spacing settings here already exist. When we configure, for example, to be on one side of the other, we are not adding more code, we are just modifying the existing code, which is for us to be able to adjust it here, it already has this code that says what its size will be here on the screen. Got it? So we save a lot of lines of code just using one, right? And then I'll teach you how you use these settings. The advantage of using the container is that you don't need to put many columns inside if you use the container's spacing settings. So if you keep doing this, it will be one by one. So try to do this when there is no other way, 
when you need to put several elements here aligned in a way that doesn't even work for you to use the settings of a single container. So I'll teach you the default settings now. Actually, before that, I'll teach you how to activate the Flexbox container. If you are coming here in the Elementor editor and have these options of setting one on one side to the other, your Flexbox container is already active. If not, you will come here inside your WordPress. You will come here in Elementor. Settings. You will come here in Resources. It may be that it is written experiments in yours too. And then you will look for the Flexbox container. It will leave it active. It will scroll down here and save. If this is not showing up here for you, it's because your Elementor is old. So you will come here in Plugins. Plugins installed, and you will come here in your Elementor and you will update, okay? It's the Elementor itself, Elementor Free. It's not Elementor Pro, it's Elementor Free that gives you the container session settings, which are the default settings to create any type of site. Okay? Okay. You see here that there is a little arrow down and the other one on the side? This here determines if you want the elements to be aligned vertically or horizontally, down or sideways, okay? So, for example, I want to put several images here, one on the side of the other. So I take this container with the arrow to the side. This is not definitive, okay? So, for example, here I will duplicate the images and they are on the side of the other. Oh, I got it wrong. It was not one on the side of the other that I wanted. I wanted it down. You don't need to exclude it and start again. You can just come here, always here, right? Always here in Layout that will have these settings. So, here in Items, there will be the settings here, the direction. So, it's here, horizontal. You just have to change it to vertical. Done. It's already getting one below the other. Do you want to go back to horizontal? See? It's already here, either horizontal or vertical, okay? And now let's go to the spacing settings. I want four items in each line, but I'm duplicating here and they are duplicating infinitely. What am I going to do? I'm going to exclude the site? The container is not good? No, there's just one setting missing. It's a bug. It's nothing. You will come here and you will come to this here. Envelope settings, it's the one that breaks the line. Wow, but then, look, it's not really good because I put it here in envelope, which is to break the line. Trim, it's one below the other. It's not one on the side of the other. It's because you didn't tell the container how much spacing it will break the line. So, this image here, it's occupying 100% of the space. From the moment you put it here in envelope, which is to break the line, you have to say how much space each item will have. So, for example, I will see that in this image, the spacing is always here in advanced. Learn this. Here. Here in the container, always here in layout, which you determine if you want to go to the side or down, or to the side or down. And in the item, in the items inside, it's always here in advanced that you determine the width of the item. So, it's standard, it's 100%. What do I want to do? I want it to be one on the side of the other. I'll start with two here, okay? Two, one on the side of the other. I'll leave it here. I'll put it personalized. We will always work with percentages. So I'll put 50% here. It's already halfway. If I click here, copy, click here, paste, style. Why isn't it getting one on the side of the other? If I put 50%, 50 plus 50 is 100, it had to be one on the side of the other. No, you're forgetting that every time there's an item, several items here in a line, they have a spacing between them. And this spacing is part of this percentage of this whole 100, right? So what do we do? We come here to the main container, we come here, look, in the space between the elements, and then we put here how much we want each space to be. Look, let's work with percentages, which is always easier. So, you change here to percentage, and then I'll say that the space between each element, I want it to be 2%, which is a nice spacing, right? 2%. And then, it continues, they are not on the side of the other. Why? Because I'm putting 50 here, plus 50, and plus 2%. It's 102, it's not 100, right? To give 100, we have to do this. Look, we have 100%. If I used two of spacing, there's 98% of free space left for me to put my widgets. Divided by two, each one has to give 49. So, instead of being 50 here, I'm going to put 49. I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste the style in this other one. Now, yes, you see? So, I have to 49 plus 49 plus 2. 2 then it's totaling 100 and they're getting one next to the other. If you want it to be four, one next to the other, you will do the same thing. Then you have to think like this. If you want it to have four items, let me get a new one down here to explain it better.
If you want it to have four items, how many spaces will it be here? Three, right? One, two, three. It's just the ones inside, okay? The one next to it doesn't count. It's just the ones inside. So one, two, three, three times 2%, right? Because each of these spaces here has 2%. So 2% times three spaces, six. And I have 94% of the area here for me to work. So if I have four items, each of my items has to be 23%, right? It doesn't have to be 49. Each one has to be 23.5. So just come here, change to 23.5. Then I come, copy, paste the style, paste the style, paste the style, paste the style. See? Now, yes, they are getting one next to the other. And then they are using the spacing right, okay? And I know it seems like a lot to you now, but it's just because I'm explaining the smallest details here of logic, okay? When you're here in the day-to-day, -day, you'll be here. It's a container, one next to the other. I'll get an image here. I'll put it here. Let me see. You already know you're already connected here. You're going to use three spaces here. So you come here, look. I already change here to percentage. I already put 2%. I already come here. I already put 23.5 here. Understand? So in the day-to-day, -day, you know what the logic is. You don't have to think too much about these numbers. You'll know you'll be decorated. At most, you'll have to do a basic math just to know how much spacing will be left. So for example, I don't want four, I want five. So let me see here. Five is one, two, three, four lines. So five times two, 10, right? 90 left divided by five. There are five items, 18. So each one has to have 18%, got it? So in the day-to-day, -day, it will be fast. This in your mind, okay? Another question. We delimited the spacing horizontally. Now there is vertical spacing. Do you see that everyone is getting here, clustered one on the other? It's because there's not enough space vertically here for them to have a nice space between them. And we configure this spacing here vertically, right? Spacing from top to bottom here at minimum height, okay? Always here in the main container, layout minimum height. So look, you're increasing here a little bit. Look, you see? It increased here. Look, you see? But ours is getting buggy. Some are up, some are down. Here you configure the spacing you want. So align items here from bottom to top. Or you can leave them all here in the center, you see? That's where the space is right. You can leave them all stretched, all up, all down, all here in the center, okay? And then there's this horizontal spacing here too. If I move it here, you won't be able to see anything. Why? Because we used 100% of the space here. So nothing we change here will be able to see. It's no use leaving one to one side, one to the other, because there's no space left here for us to mix them up. They are already here, right? Centralized, because we used 100% of the space. If I had, for example, look, coming here and putting less than the ideal size to stay in 100% of the space, look, if I had left size 20, I could have come here and left them all, right? I'm pasting it in style. Size 20, you see that there's space left here? Then I can look, I can align them to the center, which is aligned. I can leave a space between them. You see that they take up space and increase the space inside. I can align them like this. I can leave them with space around, you see? I can leave it only on one side, aligned only on one side, aligned only on the other. So when there's space left here, I'll be able to use this spacing. Notice that the ones below didn't even move. Why? Because they have the right space, right? The sum of all of them here in the line is 100%, right? So it's like this. You don't need to get a container here with several containers inside for you to put several images on one side of the other. You can get a single container and make these spacing settings, okay? Then you have to think the following. Michaela, but I don't want it to have just one image. I want it to be a card with a title, with the image, with the description, the same thing. You will come here. You will get in widget called, for example, image box. If you are going to use an image, you see, it already has an image, a title, and a text. So you can duplicate, make that same configuration there. I'll leave only three here for us to see. You can duplicate and use this spacing here, you see. So... Here you already have an image for you to put. You can put an icon here if you want, you see? You already have an image, a title, this one you can already come here. With each widget you have here, you can configure spacing inside it, color inside it. So, for example, I'm going to come here. I'm going to come here at the bottom. I'm going to put a color here at the bottom. I'm going to put a green color, you see? Here in the content, I'm going to leave the title black and the text white, okay? Inside it, I can already configure a spacing. I'll leave 30 so it won't be all stuck. If I want rounding too, here on the edge, I can come here. I can configure a spacing, you see? 
So I was able to make a card inside a single container. I didn't need to get several containers. So what happens to many of you? When you have, for example, a section like this one, where you need a title, a subtitle, and some cards below, then you say like this, now there's no way I can escape from getting several containers. What do you tend to do? You do this here. You take a section, right? With the arrow down. I'll even copy this title here so I don't have to get more. Then you put a title here, for example. Then you come here, take another container, put it here, and then you come here, take it and put it here inside this container, and then you put the cards here, right? It works too, but what is one of the main reasons why we use Flexbox Container? Decrease code, save code, save on loading, make the site faster. So, as we use this container here on the inside, we added a code that we didn't need. I'll show you that I didn't need it. For us to make the cards stay side by side, we have to have a container with the alignment here horizontal, right? With the arrow to the side. We can do that too. We take a container with the arrow to the side, then we come and get a title that we want. Copy, paste it here. I'll get a subtitle here too for you to see. Copy, I'll paste it here, and then what do I do? I come here in this title, come here in width, and I'll say I want it to be 100%. Come here in this, come here in width, and leave 100%. What's missing? The wrap, remember? There's only a line break when we leave it to wrap, see? Another thing that was missing was the spacing setting. Look, percentage 2%, okay? So we've already managed to make one side of the other, right? Even if it's with the container putting things horizontally, why isn't one on the other side and one below the other? Because each one is occupying 100% of the line. So if I say that this item will be 100% of the line, it will only be here. And then so I can put the other cards, look. I'm going to copy this card here. Since it's ready, I'm going to paste it here. Just configure the cards with the spacing I want to be on each side. So for example, I come here in advanced width. I leave it here personalized. I leave it here in percentage. I'll put 23.5, which I know is the necessary value to be four, right? One below the other. Then I come here duplicate. I can duplicate it here. See? So we have a title, a subtitle, and the cards on one side and the other. All in the same container, I didn't need another one in here, right? And then I can come here, look, it's all messed up. Height, I increase its height here. See? See there's a pink line up here and down here? When this line extends, see? Then I know it increased. Then I use these settings here, look. I want them all aligned to the center, for example. I want them all up, you know? Then I want to make two lines of cards here. Done. I just come here and duplicate. I come here, I see if there is any space left, there isn't. So I'll have to increase this space here. See? To have all the space between them. So we have a title here, a subtitle, two lines of cards, and I only needed a container. Another thing, the container space here, you can also put it. If you come here in advanced, put 50 here as a padding, you also put a space here, see? It will interfere, this padding space you put. It will interfere in the following. The padding is the space inside the container. So it delimits where your content starts. So I'm saying that my padding is here, that things have to start from here. See this little line up here? So, like this, as I have a height space here, in layout, small, then it is sticking to the other one, but then if I increase, see? It continues with the padding inside, but still has space here for me because I put a sufficient height. Now, in the horizontal spacing, it hasn't changed anything, right? Because the spacing here of the line, the 100% configuration of the line, it starts counting from where the padding starts. So if the padding starts here, this is my 100%, you see? I work inside this here. So regardless, it won't break the line. This is my 100%. It will put 23.50, 23.50 of this space here, you see? So that's it. You just come here, configure the spacings, and you can take advantage of all the space of the container, put the widgets you want, okay? Of course, there will be times when you won't be able to do this, because there will really be, for example, if I wanted a button here on this card, then yes, I can't use just one container, right? If I wanted each card of this one with a button, then I can't. Because there is no widget here in Elementor that has a button, right? This one has an image, a title, and just a little text here, right? So, unless you come here inside this text and put an HTML code to generate a button here, which is much more difficult, there is no. So what can you do? You can use the resource of aligned widgets, right? Aligned containers. So you come here, get a container, and put it in here. Or you come here and get one that already has four containers. 
Why? Because you will need to build, right? You need to put a title, then you need to put a text, then you need an image, and then you still need a button, right? I'm giving an example, but it can be several things. So, this construction of this here, I don't have a specific widget. There's no way I can just get the widget and leave them on the side. I need a box here for each one so I can group this lot of things. And then yes, you use several containers. Same thing sometimes, for example, like here, right? I needed an image on one side and here a title, a subtitle, and a text, right? So there was no way I could do it. So here, yes, I used two containers, one on each side, right? Because I needed to separate a grouping of elements here, right? In this one, for example, I used a container, but I could have done it the way I told you. So here, for example, I'm already using an unnecessary container, right? Even this button here, if we were to replicate it here the way I just showed you, we would do it like this. Look, let me copy it and bring it down here. Look, we would do it like this. I can go up here out of this container. I'm going to exclude this container here. Do it like we did, look. Leave one on the side of the other. The title comes here in advanced. Leave it 100%. It was missing to come here in the container and break the line here, right? So I left the title here 100%. Then in these containers, I come here in advanced. I leave it, which is to customize 23.5. Look, there are three, right? If there are three, 100% minus two, there is 98 left. Divided by three, each one needs to have 32.6. 32.6. See? Then I can copy, paste the style. In this one, I come so as not to change the color, right? Customize 32.6. Then I come here in the container, put the spacing here, 2%. Oh, I did the wrong count, girl. 100 minus 4, right? Because there are two spaces. Divided by 3, 32. So it's just 32. There's no 6 here, no. 32. Paste the style, and in this one, 32. Done. See, it's already one on the side of the other. And this one, I come here in it, advanced, I leave it at 100%. I was missing this workbench because I had to reassemble this here, but if you're already doing it the first time, already organized, you don't need this whole workbench, right? Look, and then I come here in height, I increase the height of the container here, and I come here, all aligned to the center, see? I can increase the spacing here, a title, the cards, and still the button down here, right? So here, for example, what I did when I taught this site, I could not have done it. I could have saved this container, this line of code here, understand? So these are things that we have to be careful about, because, for example, to explain to you if I were to do it alone, I would do it quickly, right? But to explain how I went to do this site here, explaining the time it would take me to explain this here, sometimes it takes longer, and then do it the way it was faster, I went and did it the way it was faster. So sometimes we, by habit, we try to do it in these ways here that are faster, that we don't need to think a lot, do a lot of math, and we could do it with better usability, which is the way I just showed you, saving the container, saving the code, okay? Another question you have is also related to mobile. So, for example, let me go back to what was here, for example. So, for example, let's suppose I made a title like this, and then I configured these images to be on one side and the other, all inside the same container. Then if I put it here on mobile, right? Click here, you know, right? Click here on the responsive mode, put it on mobile. Look, they're all on one side and the other, right? Only, for example, if it's an image that has something written, this size here will not look good. It has to be only two, at most, one on the side of the other, so we can see it properly. So, I come here in the image. Look, I change it to percentage, and instead of leaving 23 and a few percent, I'll leave 49, right? Then I come here, copy-paste style, look, and it's getting one on the side of the other, because I put 49%, right? 49 plus 49, 98 plus 2% of the spacing, 100, you see? And then many times this can happen here. Look, do you want to see? Look, you see? They're getting mixed up. Because the spacing that we configured, the height, right? That we had configured, look, 506, for the computer was cool, but for the cell phone, as we put more lines, it's not enough. So I just come here and increase my spacing. Okay, let's stay here with a nice line space between them, right? Let's stay one on the side of the other. You can see if I want one of each, it's the same thing. I come here and change it to 100%. I can see that it personalizes and leaves the width 100%. Or I can just write here, 100%, you see? Then it will be occupying one line only, right? 
So that's it, guys. These are the biggest doubts you're having, right? Regarding the Flexbox container, which is this issue of spacing, how to organize, you talk a lot about it to me, but when you put it on mobile, it's all messed up because of that, because you have to come here and configure the spacing right. So you have to consider the spacing between the items, right? Which is this spacing here, and you have to consider the spacing of height too, right? So that's it. That's what's missing, okay? So let me pass it on to you. Let me recap and pass it on to you step by step from the configuration here from the beginning when you want items to be on one side or the other so the first thing i do i put a padding spacing so i come here in advanced i already leave for example 50 of padding okay then i go back here to layout then i leave it here envelope because i want the line to break right that there are several lines then i come here in space between elements i already put in percentage I already put the percentage I want, for example, two, then I start to put it. I want a title here, then I come here in advanced. I already set it to 100% width, because it will be alone here in the line. I left it centralized here, then I come here. I want an icon box, for example, or an image box. I drag it down here, okay? Then I come here in advanced, I come here in width, customize. I check if it's in percentage here, and I put it. 23 and 50 because I know I'm going to want four here in this line, right? I already duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. It's already here, all below each other. Then I still wanna come with a button. I come, I drag a button here. I leave it here behind this line. Sometimes this happens. The element you can't put exactly where you want, it's okay, you put it anywhere, then you copy, exclude it from here. Then you go to the last element, click on it, click on paste, it will be exactly below it. Okay, okay. This one, I want to be in a single line, so I come here in advanced, width 100%. It's already getting all spaced out, right? Then I come here and adjust, leave it centralized, then I come here, I've already put all the items I want. I come here at the minimum height. I increase here so that they have space between them, right? So, that's it. I've already configured all the space I need here. Again, the sum. How do I know how much percentage I need to put here? I consider 100%, then I see how many spaces will be here between each item, so if I wanted three, it would be two and five. Space only. Do it like this. It's always the amount of items minus one. So if I want three here, it's two spaces, right? Each space is 2%, so two times two, four. Four percent will be just space. So I have 100% of my space here, minus four, 93 to work. Divided by three, each item has to be 32, right? So I come here, I leave 32. Then you right-click, copy, paste, ready. I have them here with 32, okay? So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, tell me here in the comments what you think, if it seemed to you, if you are already using Flexbox Container. I highly recommend that you use it because in a little while, the Elementor will already leave this configuration as inactive. So it is important that you learn because of that, and also because, as I showed you, it is to make our life easier. It can be complicated here at the beginning for you to learn how logic works, just because it is the first time, the first times after you've already got it, how it works. You'll see it's much easier. It gives you a lot more possibilities to create layouts, okay? So that's it, a hug. See you next time, bye.